cover lab 6 today we are going to cover lab number 7 that is number 7 that is open integrator before discussing about open integrator we will first discuss about virtual ground concept virtual ground concept comes in the inverting configuration of open let's first show inverting configuration of open this is inverting configuration inverting terminal this is non inverting terminal and this is output the inverting terminal is feedback through RF resistor that is feedback resistor input is applied on inverting terminal through RN this could be VN and this is grounded what is inverting configuration of open in which the input is applied on inverting pin and output is taken from output terminal while no inverting pin is grounded if let's suppose we are taking the concept of ideal open in ideal open the input impedance is infinite if input impedance is infinite there will be zero current between two both terminal of the open between inverting and non inverting terminal there will be zero current if there is zero current there will be zero voltage drop here zero voltage drop as non inverting pin is already grounded then this inverting pin will be considered as virtual ground because here will be zero current on inverting pin there will be zero current there will be no internal current in the open on the inverting pin so whatever current on input pin flowing that is let's suppose is IN will flow from feedback resistor RF same current will flow from feedback resistor R I N this is the concept of virtual ground now let's move toward the concept of open integrator open integrator is same as mathematical operation integration mathematical operation integration is what summation perform the summation function or it takes the area under the curve of any function in other words we can say it count the duration the input is present on the input terminal the output will be proportion to the input change of change in the input voltage so to understand the basic operation we will first discuss about the ideal integrate then we will move toward practical integrator ideal integrator the circuit diagram of integrator is this is again from inverting configuration of open input is applied on inverting terminal there is little difference in inverting configuration we have used resistor in feedback but here we will use capacitor in feedback the current flow from input terminal that is IN this is positive terminal of capacitor this is negative current will flow from this one we can notice here that capacitor make the RC circuit with RN this is the difference between inverting configuration and integrator to understand the operation of integrator we will discuss about the capacitor that how capacitor charges and discharge
We know charge and capacitor is directly proportional to the current and time. Also, charge and capacitor can be written as proportional to the CV. C is capacitance and VC is voltage across capacitance. Both these for the charging of capacitor. We win, we can equate both these equations. If we equate these equations, ICT equal to CVC. If I want to find the voltage of across capacitor, VC will equal to IC over C into T. You can see voltage across capacitor is the function of charging current. In simple RC circuit, the charging current graph is exponential in nature. Because as voltage across capacitor increase, current will decrease and also that will decrease the rate of change of voltage. So this way the current graph for simple RC circuit is exponential in nature. So the key concept of integrator is to make that charging current linear or straight line. So let's see how this makes the charging current graph linear or straight line. Output voltage on capacitor to see what will be the output voltage on capacitor we have to apply input on integrator okay. this is resistor okay, this is capacitor and negative this is R input let's suppose I'm applying positive peak or a step voltage on input step voltage this step voltage this is positive on input of the integrator the output on integrator will be ram negative ram that will decrease from zero and further will decrease because output oh, on capacitor is same as the output voltage V out VC or V out is same here it is negative that's why output will decrease from 0 and put the decrease so from this we can see that the output of integrator is ram for the step function further if I give the square wave negative then this will go let's suppose do this the output will be this way this negative pulse the output will increase if it is positive pulse output will be negative for that will So you can see for the square wave input the output 
across capacitor or output voltage will be the triangular wave. If it is positive going pulse, the output will be negative RAM function. If it is negative going pulse, then output will be positive pulse, uh, positive RAM. So PAM integrator is mostly used for triangular wave generation or RAM generator. Okay, further moving toward the output formula, output voltage formula. That's So equation for output voltage this we have already discussed about the this formula that is BC equal to IC over C into T as IC is same as IE because of the virtual ground the same current will flow from the feedback capacitor ic is equal to in in equal to vn over rn so we can replace ic with vn over rn into c into t to find out the rate of change in voltage we can we will give here dvc over vt dt equal to v in t over r in c to cancel out the differentiation we will put integration because we know differentiation and integration operation both are opposite so vc equal to integration v in into t over r in c so Vc equal to 1 over, this is constant, these both are constant, Vn into T or Vn into Dt. So you can see output voltage or capacitor voltage is directly proportional to the integration of input voltage. That is the formula for capacitor voltage or output voltage or integrator this is what we discuss about ideal integrator we are now moving towards the practical integrator there is a little bit difference in practical integrator integrator in practical integrator first we this this is negative, this is positive. This is capacitor. This is ground. This is V out. If I am applying DC input, DC input means there will be zero frequency. If I am applying DC input, the capacitor will block that input that means no feedback will be going to the input terminal and the the only only gain of the op amp will be open loop gain of the op amp that open loop gain is infinite that will cause the op amp to go into saturation 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 is a point in which op amp will only shift in one voltage level not any other voltage level so to control that open loop gain we will connect parallel resistance with capacitor here this is r1 and this is r2 now if we apply low frequency low frequency input or dc if this is blocked in the starting frequency or low frequency this this block the DC current but there will be closed loop closed loop voltage gain that will be that is closed loop voltage gain is equal to minus R2 over Rn means on low frequency this is graph between gain and gain and frequencies 
in the starting low frequency there will be constant gain that will be R2 over Rn put that if we are increasing frequency if we are increasing frequency then the input impedance this impedance of capacitance will be low that means this will be short out and the output will be feedback as it is to the input then gain will reduce to unity means this resistor actually limiting the open loop gain of the open okay further we will discuss about what is the response of op amp integrator to different input signals